Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's uh, web seminar, kind of online conference call. Um, it's right at 10.03. This is Amy Lemley with John Burton Advocates for Youth. We're going to give people a moment or two more to join, and then we'll get started. We'll get through the content, and uh, thanks, everyone, for being here. All right. Um, thank you again, everyone, for being on today's uh, presentation. Um, if you are able or if you're not able to see the uh, presentation, uh, please do let us know. We have uh, shared the screen, but we want to make sure that uh, everyone is able to see this, see what we're sharing today and uh, make this the most productive um, uh, conversation possible. Um, so let's get started. Um, all right, uh, next slide, please. So today, uh, Simone, my colleague Simone Turek Lee and myself are going to talk about uh, funding that's available uh, for um, transitional housing uh, for youth and for housing navigation. Um, and so uh, we're going to spend about an hour doing that. You know, it's a very uh, you know, I, I guess, frankly, the word is last minute uh, presentation, but uh, due to the timely nature of the funds being distributed, we felt like it was important to proceed um, and to make sure that um, these funds get out in the community. So I'm going to pause once more. I would like a confirmation that people are able to see the screen. If someone could confirm that, I sure would appreciate that. I don't want to kind of proceed unless people are able to see that. looks like we're good. We're good. Okay. Thank you, Simone, very much. Um, so on this slide, you have the information to participate, the call-in number, the access code, uh, and then Simone has developed a great kind of one-stop shop for all information related to this. It's a web page. You can see the link there. Um, and then just please submit your questions as we, as we uh, get them. Um, I'm not sure we'll have the answers to all of them, but we will commit to track them down and make sure that we get as many answers as humanly possible. Okay, next slide. So let's have a little background about this uh, source of funding. You know, some of you are like, what money are you guys talking about? Where is this from? Um, and this was included in last year's state budget. Um, Assembly member Phil Ting and Assembly uh, member Laura Friedman uh, together did really excellent work on behalf of our young people in California. Um, Mr. Ting's bill was originally AB 995, and it included an $8 million augmentation to THP+. So that was the policy bill, um, but then the language was also included in trailer bill language in the budget. And so that was $8 million uh, for THP+. Part two was the issue of like how young people actually secure housing. And so AB 531, authored by Assemblywoman Laura Friedman, included money for housing navigation. And so these are the two kind of um, things that were included. Or there were a lot of things included in the budget, but specifically around, you know, current and former foster youth uh, housing interventions. And so all of this was possible due to these really wonderful legislators. And then, you know, many of you who are on the call today, you sent in letters, you went to the legislature, you made phone calls. You know, this was a really strong coalition that worked together to say, you know, in the face of this housing crisis, we need to do something to support current and former foster youth. So, and I'm saying that because many of you may need to kind of use those points as we, as we move forward to remind people uh, what this money was how this money came about. This did not fall off of a tree. This came together because, you know, you know, advocates, county representatives, provider representatives work together um, to make these resources possible. So that's just a little bit of, you know, background bringing you up to speed um, on where the funding came from. Next slide, please. Um, so why did, why did we work to expand THP Plus in the state budget? 
this slide kind of says it all. There's been a 50% increase in the average rent for a two-bedroom apartment. Um, and so during the same time, the average rate uh, for THP Plus remain unchanged and the budget for THP Plus remain unchanged. And so together, uh, we made the case uh, that if this is going to be a relevant program, uh, if we are going to responsibly discharge young people out of foster care, disproportionately custodial parents and young people with disabilities who utilize THP Plus, if we are going to, if this program is going to be something for them, the rate needs to be adequate in order to, um, uh, to uh, the rate and the budget level needs to be adequate. So um, that's just a little bit of background about why why this effort was made. Next slide, please. Um, again, the over half of THP Plus programs had a waiting list, um, and over 400 young people and 107 of their children were on the waiting list. So this is, again, what led us to really uh, make the case. Next slide. And here's a, here's a you know, brief slide that just talks about you know, what that wait list you know, uh, looked like across the state. And so this is in 2018, and you can see um, very big um, in different parts of the state. Um, next slide. And as you can imagine, things have not gotten any better since 2018, and in fact, they've gotten much worse. Um, so when, when we initially advocated for this policy change, um, we've since then have seen a 53% uptick in the number of young people waiting for THP+. Um, so the, the good news is this money was included in the state budget, which went into effect July 1st, 2019. Um, the less good news is we're now having a web seminar on March 16th, 2020, about how to get that money. Um, but as we say, better late than never. Um, the money is still there. The need is definitely still there. Um, and so we need to act quickly uh, to make sure that this money is directed to youth and that is not reverted to the general fund. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Um, so you might think, why wasn't this done the way everything's done in child welfare? Usually things, uh, the money goes to the Department of Social Services and then Department of Social Services does an allocation and then that allocation is pushed out to counties through a county fiscal letter. Um, so why is this different? Um, and so this slide kind of tells that story. And you need to understand that story as people in the counties and in the communities uh, to, in order uh, to you know, make sure that these funds are directed as they were intended. So in the kind of final budget negotiations, the Depart Department of Finance um, did not want to add additional funding to a program that was part of that had been realigned, uh, and so instead the funding was redirected, you know, was directed to the Department of Housing and Community Development, and instead of a language that was specific to THP Plus, more generalized language was included. Um, so, you know, I think those of us who are involved in political work and policy work, well, in all work, realize that you do what you have to do to get the job done. And, and this definitely got the job done. This resulted in an $8 million annual investment um, that targets, you know, you know, former foster youth and youth in juvenile probation. It wasn't as tidy or direct as we had kind of hoped. We wanted the money to kind of go through the normal channels. This is a little bit of a different channel. And yet, nonetheless, these resources are now available. And that's what's important. Um, so uh, it might take a little bit more um, effort um, to bring them down. Um, it has taken a little bit more effort. Again, we're, we're having this conversation in March instead of September as we originally wanted. Um, but it's worth the effort uh, to keep trying. Um, and so here we are today in the 1920 state budget. It does include the $8 million for, for the THP Plus proposal and the $5 million for the housing navigation proposal. And I think with that, I am going to turn it over to Simone. Thanks, Amy, and good morning, everyone. Um, so yeah, so kind of as Amy described um, where we arrived, um, first we'll talk about the um, $8 million for transitional housing. Um, so $8 million was included annually for county child welfare agencies to help young adults ages 18 to 25 secure and maintain housing. 
um, with priority given to young adults formerly in the state's foster care or juvenile probation system. So what does that mean? I mean, really, it, we're looking at the population. Um, that priority population is who accesses THP+. Plus. So a lot of the, the intent was still there, um, kind of same age range, uh, former foster and probation youth. And then the funding is administered, as Amy said, by HPD, um, not DSS. And so that, that is new um, for you know, child welfare, for um, something to be administered from HDD to child welfare. Um, and then HDD was in the bill language was required to consult with Department of Social Services, Department of Finance, and um, CWDA uh, to develop an allocation schedule. And um, they certainly worked closely with those parties. And I know DSS has provided very strong direction um, as this process has, has progressed over the past year. Um, and then again, you know, funding allocated to child welfare agencies. So this is something that is, um, you know, prioritized for former foster and probation youth, but really administered through child welfare. Um, so really, you know, a child welfare uh, program. And uh, the funding, you know, Amy, um, mentioned some of the what was included in the kind of the the budget, uh, the trailer bill um, for uh, the eight million dollars, the funding. And there's been I know some confusion about this. It is annual funding, but it's the language is that it's subject to budget appropriation. So you know um, it's if if there's not um, basically it's subject to suspension in 2021. So if state general fund expenditures exceed revenue. Um, that it, it would be subject to suspension. But then there's also language that says that it's the intent of the legislature to consider alternative solutions to facilitate the continued implementation of the program if that were to happen. And just to kind of clarify that language, um, several programs in the budget were subject to that, to that language. So this is not something specific to the $8 million. Um, and we certainly would um, fight to ensure that it was funded, um, continue to be funded annually if that did uh, occur. So, there we go. Uh, so kind of eligible uses. Now, th there's certainly, you know, broad language around eligible uses. Um, they call this program in the, um, in the budget and what HCD has put out, the transitional housing program. Um, it specifies that funds shall be used to help young adults who are 18 to 25 years of age secure and maintain housing. And then it has four um, kind of eligible uses of funds, but it's not limited to those eligible uses. So it is a bit broader. Um, the first one is to identify and assist housing services for this population in your community. The second one, assist this population to secure and maintain housing, with, and then it reminds with priority given to those in the state's foster care or probation system, improve coordination of services and linkages to community resources within the child welfare system and the homeless continuum of care. And I want to stop there for a second. You know, the original um, AB 995, one of the provisions we had was um, the intent was to create more linkages with the local continuum of care. So. Um, you know, that was kind of ended up, you know, being part of this program in the end, um, where you, so you see, some, again, some of this original intent kind of remained. And then the last was to, um, is to provide engagement and outreach and targeting to serve those with most severe needs. So then the next slide is just, you know, the, the actual language that you see in SB80. I won't obviously sit here and read it, but if you want to take a look at it, um, it's at the link at the bottom of the screen. And we'll obviously be sending this presentation out to you. So if you do wanna click in the links directly, uh, you can. So now I wanna move over to the $5 million um, funding for housing navigation. So, you know, this originally in 530, AB 531, this was intended for current foster youth. So ages 18 to 21, um, non-minor dependents, and um, kind of similarly where it landed was that, uh, you know, $5 million is one-time funding for counties to support um, uh, youth with housing navigation. So for the support of housing navigators to help young adults age 18 to 21 secure and maintain housing with priority given to young adults in the foster care system. So again, the priority population is kind of where the intent was um, of the original legislation. Um, the funding is also administered by HCD, and then the language here is that HCD may consult 
uh, with DSS to develop an allocation schedule, which they did. Um, and then funds are available for encumbrance or expenditure until June 30th, 2022. So here's something that's different. Um, for the transitional housing program, if the funds are not um, encumbered uh, this year by the end of June, they will revert to the state general fund. For the housing navigation funding, um, the state actually does have a longer period of time to, to um, encumber and allocate the funding and because, and it is one-time funding. So there's a, you know, a big difference there between the two programs. So uh, housing navigation, Slide will advance. Here we go. So eligible uses. So uh, similar, there's kind of broadly um, defined uses and are not limited to, but so the housing navigation program funds um, housing navigators for county child welfare agencies. And then it describes what those housing navigator activities um, may include. So assisting young adults age 18 to 21 with securing and maintaining housing. Again, priority given to young adults in the state's foster care system, non-minor dependents. Um, providing housing case management, um, which include essential services and emergency support to foster youth, preventing young adults from becoming homeless, and improving coordination of services and linkages to key resources across the community, including those from within the child welfare system and the local continuum of care. And then again, bill language, um, if you want to look at that more closely, um, it's in uh, SB 109, and the link is there on the screen. So, uh, you know, we're, we're very excited that HDD has released this application. Um, we really, if you kind of leave with one thing today, it's that the deadline is March 31st, and we really hope that every county moves on this funding. And we want to get this information out widely for this, you know, presentation to people contact people who you think may not know about this, who need to know about this. We want to make sure that people get their applications in. There, are, there is some movement to um, get some exceptions to this deadline, which I'll talk about in a moment. But until that's confirmed, we really, everyone should be moving on this as quickly as possible. So HDD notified um, all the county child welfare directors on February 7th uh, of this year um, of the availability of this funding and gave a deadline of March 31st for counties to accept the allocation amount that they were given. Um, and then any funds, again, not accepted will revert to the state general fund. So we really want to encourage you to act fast. Um, HDD set up a web page on their, on their um, website that's right there that has kind of the application materials and we'll go over those um, in a second. But if you want to check that website out at a later date, um, there is the link. So here's kind of everything that goes into that application, um, those application materials that need to be sent to HDD by March 31st. So the first thing is um, for each of the two programs, there's a, an allocation acceptance form that needs to be signed. Um, and I'll, in a few minutes, actually pull those forms up so you can look at them. But it's really important that those forms get in by the 31st. And you'll see that they are very simple. Um, HDD did make this very, you know, the application is not long. It's, it's almost like fill in your contact information and, and your time. So um, a very simple acceptance form, a government um, agency taxpayer ID form or TIN form. And they I did get an email this morning from um, HDD just clarifying, because um, we had sent um, some additional questions to them, that you know, the, the, the individual, so the director, whomever the individual is that is on that TIN form um, is the same person that should be signing the allocation acceptance form. And then lastly, uh, a signed resolution from the County Board of Supervisors for each of the two programs. So we're looking at two separate resolutions. And here's where people are getting a little tripped up because of the timeline. You know, they're thinking, well, is there even a board meeting? You know, by the time I found out about this, is there even a board meeting? where this can be added to the agenda in time to get this in. And so CWDA, I know, has talked with um, HCD about um, extending this. Um, we've talked with them. 
And what uh, Stephanie, who is managing this program at ACB, has communicated to me is that they are granting extensions for the board resolutions on an individual basis. So what you need to do, if you are one of those counties who's thinking, this isn't happening before March 31st, um, especially I know right now things are, we're looking at a very different situation with the coronavirus outbreak of our things getting canceled, um, certainly uh, just cause to extend this. Um, you need to email Stephanie for an extension on the resolutions, and she would like to know when to expect the final resolution. So when you email her and her email is at the top of the screen there, give her a date, even if it's a slight estimate, give her a date of when you can expect to get those resolutions in. She did clarify that as of now, the acceptance forms and the TIN form are still due at the end of this month. So just move forward with those, um, even if you're not getting the resolutions just yet. And then all of these materials get emailed to this address that they've set up, thp at hcd.ca.gov um, for the THP funding. And then for um, the housing navigation side, the materials would go to Stephanie um, at the email address um, on the screen there. And she is the point person. If you have questions you want to direct to HCD, she is that person to answer those questions. So now what I want to do is I want to, if you're just, if you can be a little patient with me, I'm going to share my screen and I want to show just what each of these forms look like. Um, give me one second here. So first we're going to pull up the THP acceptance form. And I'm hoping that this is successfully showing um, my screen is successfully showing to all of you. But as you can see, let me move this box out the way. Um, as you can see, um, it's a pretty simple form. Um, at the top, we have contact information, um, legal name of applicant as stated on resolution. And again, that should be consistent with what's on your um, TIN form. I mean, this is all very basic information here. Um, and there's kind of a little uh, checklist here. And then um, it clarifies what the use of funds are. We went over that in a previous slide, when the funds must be sent. We'll go over that in a little bit. Um, and uh, the deadline, this is very minimal reporting requirements that we'll go over later, and then certification. So there's really not, and, and signing, there's really not a whole lot to this um, application. And let me just make sure that you guys are able to see. Okay, great. Someone said, yes, they can see. Um, so this is what it looks like. And on the right-hand upper corner is where if you got this, if you, your child welfare director received this form and the allocation amount that your county would be receiving would be on this upper right-hand corner. And we'll show what all of those allocation amounts are in a moment. Um, but I'm just going to close this out. And then I want to pull up the um, housing navigation acceptance. Um, so that you can see that. And that's basically, as you can see, it's almost, you know, it's very similar to what we just looked at. Um, I'm just going to scroll down quickly um, here so that you can see it. But uh, no big surprises here, very similar. Um, and then next, I'll pull up the government, the TIN form. <clears throat> here we go. And so this, again, this is the taxpayer ID form, and this is what it looks like. You're filling out some, I imagine, you know, this is probably not unfamiliar to folks. And uh, yeah, so we'll close this out. And then lastly, I just wanna show um, what the, let's see where it is, here we go. So here's the THP, the, there's a resolution template. So to make it easy, um, HDDs provided a template for your board of supervisors for their resolution. They're, of course, you know, uh, it can add much more to it, but here's a bare bones resolution. Um, and we've already been in contact with some counties who are adding additional information to make more specific asks of their uh, child welfare agencies as far as what is, um, what they're asking them uh, to do. And here is the navigation resolution template. And all of this, these documents are available um, on obviously HDD's website and on this little web page that we made for um, 
this program, just like we've done for THP Plus in the past. Let me pull back up the slideshow. There we go. Let's move forward, if it will let us. There we go. So the methodology used. So, uh, you know, the HCD was charged with kind of working with um, DSS, with Department of Finance, and with CWGA in figuring an allocation schedule out. And where they landed um, for the $8 million was to distribute it based on each county's, and there's two things it's based on. First is, and this is the, again, this is the THP on the left side, on the percentage of the total statewide weighted average of youth in foster care ages 19 and a half and 20 years old, and homeless unaccompanied young adults age 18 through 24. So they looked at a couple different factors to get their uh, methodology and um, determine what amount of funding each county would receive. And then for counties with zero eligible populations did not receive any funding or an allocation. On the housing navigation program side, so the green box, this was distributed based on each county's percentage of the total statewide number of 17 through 21 year olds in foster care. And again, counties with zero eligible population uh, were not funded. So here for THP, here are the allocation amounts. Um, I, I'm not gonna you know, sit on this slide for too long. I'm sure people, you know, if they don't already know what their allocation is, their first thing is gonna be, let me quickly find my county and see what the allocation is. Again, we will email this out and this is available on, that, the, on our site that we set up on the JBay site. So um, you can look at this at a later date. But as you can see, um, Alpine and Sierra both didn't receive an allocation because they didn't have, um, they had zero eligible youth according to the allocation methodology and then all the other counties received their allocation amounts based on the uh, methodology that I described. Um, moving on to housing navigation. So similarly, oh, someone said they can't see the bottom of the slide. Let me go back. Um, hmm. Can't see LA. Um, well, you know, what I'll do is well, I'll send this out to everyone. I will tell you um, on the um, I'm going back to THP. I'll tell you what the bottom row is, and then we'll send this out, and you'll have that information at a later date. But if you wanted to know LA at the very bottom of the screen and what LA got um, or would be receiving is um, two point almost two point seven million. San Francisco um, four hundred fifty nine thousand, uh, Yuba thirteen thousand six hundred. So again, sorry that you're not able to see that row, <clears throat> but we'll send this out so that you can see the full list um, at a later time. So housing navigation, I imagine you're probably having the same problem. You won't, can't see Madeira, San Luis Obispo, or, or Yuba probably, but uh, we'll, um, I'll read those bottom ones and then we'll send this out at a later time. And so this, again, this is the $5 million um, allocation. So Madeira is 23,215, San Luis Obispo is 48,705, and let me move this question box out of the way. Um, Yuba is 15,475. And in this one, there are three counties that didn't have eligible populations according to the methodology, so they didn't get allocations. And that is, again, Alpine and Sierra, but also uh, Mono County. So reporting requirements, we uh, talked a little, just you kind of saw on the form what those were, but here they are written out. Um, on the transitional housing side and on the housing navigation program side, they're pretty much identical with the exception of the housing program, the transitional housing program having an additional question. Um, so how many people were served? What were the funds used for? Um, who were the housing navigators? Um, if there were housing navigators on the transitional housing program side, um, how many people served were in foster care and I'll clarify this with HCD, but I imagine for the THP, they're wanting to know formerly in foster care um, and formerly in probation, since that's what the language says. Um, we'll get some clarity on that. And then um, the reports are due annually for three years following the distribution of funding. So for this year, um, you'd be reporting at the end of this year, the end of next year, at, in the end of uh, the year following, so 2021. Um, and 
uh, you know, given that THP is an annual allocation and this funding will come back around again the next year, we'll have to see what those reporting requirements look like. But for now, these are the reporting requirements for the current fiscal year's um, funding. So what is the timeline? So we know that in February, this was um, information was released to county child welfare directors. Um, you know, the, the, the funding was, in, uh, in fact, let's back up a little further even. The funding was included in the 2019-20 state budget. Um, HCD took the next several months to kind of work with DSS, work with DOF, work with CWDA to figure out the allocation schedule and other um, information, and then release that information in February to county child welfare directors. And then here we are in March with the due date for the two allocation um, acceptance forms, the TIN form, and the two board of resolutions, resolutions from the board um, due at the end of this month. Um, and then again, just, just reminding you, exceptions to the board resolutions are being granted on an individual basis, but still shoot for that March 31st deadline for the other materials. Um, in April, next month, uh, HCD will process applications, and then they'll start to execute their agreements with, with counties. And then in May and June, they'll start awarding funding. Um, hopefully, you know, obviously you want to get the funding as soon as possible, given that it's for this current fiscal year. Um, so hopefully that'll be, you know, more so in May than June. Um, but certainly by the end of June, that will happen. And then they're currently figuring out what month, kind of when, for fiscal year 2020, 2021, interesting uh, mouthful to say, um, what the new kind of THP allocation, what, when that will become available and what that process will look like. Us, you know, at John Burton Advocates for Youth, we are certainly committed to working um, with the state to try to get this out much sooner than it was out this year, you know, given it will be for T the housing navigation, that's a one time, but THP, this will be happening annually, and we'll get, get, get some rhythm going and, and how this will come out annually, but we certainly wouldn't want to see this happen again in March. I don't think they do either. So our goal is the beginning of the fiscal year. Um, but of course, we don't, uh, that's to be determined right now. And so as we get that information, we will um, let you all know. And then kind of to jump ahead, um, by June 30th, 2022 is when the funding for this current fiscal year must be spent. So that's what we do know now is that counties must spend this year's funding by the end of the 2021-22 fiscal year. So one thing we do want to do, you know, Amy and I were talking and for, you know, when we look back many, many, many years ago at how we have kind of worked so closely with counties and providers on the THP plus program, it's been uh, certainly, you know, some of our, our, our favorite work that we've done here at J Bay and kind of building a coalition and um, sharing best practices and advocating for policies and funding to, to assist this population. Um, you know, we want to do the same and, and include, you know, this new funding and this new, um, this new funding in, into those activities. And we want to get clear from counties on, to, as a start, you know, who is your county contact for this new funding? Is it going to be the same person that is your THB Plus contact? So we right now have a roster and um, we've maintained this for a number of years, but truth be told, it is certainly out of date. Um, it needs some, it needs some love. And so the first thing is we want to know if the THP plus roster we have, and this is not the provider roster. We're talking about the roster of county contacts. So who at your <coughs> county agency is the point person for THP plus? Um, we want you to go to that link and tell us if that is accurate for your county. If it is not, please email me and tell me who the current person is. Then we also want to know, is this going to be the point person for the $8 million as well for the THP, for the Transitional Housing Program funding that's going through HDD? Is it going to be the same contact? We know that several counties intend to, you know, use this for THP plus. So I imagine in those counties it would be, but we don't, we're not sure. So please clarify for us whether um, this will be the same person. And if not, please tell us who that person is. So immediate next steps 
Um, first, you know, just like, like I just said, please email me and update your THP Plus contact and confirm whether the same contact for the new funding will be standing. And then notify if, if, if you are not absolutely certain that your child welfare director is already aware of this deadline and this, and this opportunity, get in contact with them. They could have missed HCD's email, you know, thing, there's so much going on, particularly right now in the past few weeks, things have just, you know, picked up. Um, there's a lot going on and this could be missed. So make sure that the correct people are aware of this and then contact your board of supervisors or have the, whoever the appropriate person is at your agency, contact them, get these resolutions on the next agenda. Consider requesting an extension, obviously, and to email Stephanie about that. Lastly, for counties, get your documents in by March 31st and make sure when you get your documents in that you are applying for your county's full allocation amount. On the provider side, we want to make sure that if your counties aren't plugged in here, notify your county partners about this funding application deadline, you know, make sure this is on their radar, and then discuss with them how you all as a community might want to use your county's allocation. Do you want to expand THP plus capacity? Do you want to enrich program supports? What, are, what is the need in your county? Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Amy, back over to Amy to talk a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, about how new funding could expand THP Plus, this new funding. Thank you, Simone. Um, so some thoughts just to share with you. Um, I think the um, one is bed capacity. I mean, we know uh, there's been this 53% increase in the number of young people waiting for THP Plus. One approach would simply be to add more beds. Um, this a second approach would be the monthly rate. You know, the monthly rate has not kept pace with inflation. Uh, we have providers around the state who are backing out of THP Plus because they, the rate that they're being paid, they're not able to secure housing in our current market. And so that could be an option uh, that you discuss locally. Another one is a parenting rate. Um, and so this is a rate for custodial parents who are commonly... Uh, living in one bedroom apartments, which have a higher cost. Um, and so given the importance of supporting and serving parents, um, that should be something to consider. I think at the current time, we just have one county, I believe, uh, Santa Clara, that has a parenting rate um, and has really put a lot of time and effort into thinking about how to use this program to support young parents. And um, another one would be the program length um, to add, you know, currently it is a 24-month program. If a young person is participating in, edu in an education program, um, 20, 28 or 29 counties have opted into a provision that allows the program to be an extra 12 months. But, you know, your program, your county could kind of create an extra length of time potentially, you know, a little bit of a runway, like with a, uh, with a, with a uh, smaller subsidy, you could get creative that way. Um, and then on the slide there, you see some kind of specific ideas around counties with smaller allocations. I think all of these ideas, however, fall within the um, current reality of the coronavirus response. I and mean, we know young people who are in THP plus um, are more likely to be, you know, service sector hourly workers. They are going to lose hours and potentially even um, lose jobs. And so their capacity to pay their portion of the rent is going to be challenged. And so, um, you know, this is flexible funding that could be used to deepen your rental subsidy during this time of housing crisis. Um, that many of our young people are going to fa face due to their loss of income, due to businesses being closed and, and jobs being uh, lost. So really, really encourage you to, um, you know, right now it could be hard to be like, what, this is a new funding source. We've got to fill these papers out. You know, we're working on this crisis. And to really think about this funding as part of the crisis response, like right here, right now, there's $13 million for some of the most vulnerable young people in California. Um, so rather than seeing it outside of that, let's use it right here and right now to address the, the kind of reality they're facing in terms of being kind of in the most kind of vulnerable part of the economy. Um, uh, next slide, please. 
uh, so then housing navigation is, uh, that's the THP plus money. How can housing navigation assist youth in uh, supervised independent living placements? And so, again, identifying supportive adults that could provide housing as a supervised independent living placement, uh, assisting NMDs, identifying realistic, safe, and stable housing options, roommate matching, cultivating landlords, assisting NMDs communicating with landlords, uh, providing financial assistance. So these are these are kind of a collection of activities that fall under that housing navigation umbrella. I think a question that you know some of you might be asking, you know, if you are county representatives, like who can I contract with to do that collection of work? You know, if you look at the allocations by counties, some of the allocations are quite modest. It's hard to believe. Um, it's hard to kind of know, like, how can that be coupled potentially with a current contract? And I think that that's, those are really conversations that are going to have to happen locally. Um, so, for example, let's say the, you know, you're, you're in a county and you have a THP plus provider. You may want to say, could your organization also take on these housing navigation uh, for young people um, in your program and out of your program? But really trying to, you know, identify organizations that have a have a experience doing housing navigation, and we're happy to try and help broker some of those relationships um, if we can. And so, if you're having a hard time, you know, identifying an organization to work with locally to do housing navigation, uh, please let us know, and please just have the conversation with your with your current providers. I mean. Um, the kind of question is, can that housing navigation go above and beyond uh, THP plus? Because, you know, there this is something that is uh, certainly needed among young people who are trying to identify uh, a supervised independent living placement. And so uh, we we want the funding to not just focus on securing funding for THP plus, but because, you know, that is an existing program, but to go out to those young people who are looking for a SILP and, you know, often are homeless while they're waiting for one. So, um, all right, next slide, please. So as Simone mentioned, she's kind of pulled this all together in one place on this, on this website. And, um, you know, as we get additional resources, we'll uh, keep uh, updating them. And um, now I'm going to pass it back over to Simone for uh, Q&A. Great, thanks, Amy. Uh, so we have a bunch of good questions. Um, so one, the first question is, can counties use this eight million to pay our THP providers? Um, so yes, but not for services already rendered. So it, yes, you can absolutely use it to fund um, services to your current THP plus providers that they're providing but it wouldn't be for past services. It would be for services after you receive the, the, your allocation, new services. Um, and I imagine that's what many counties will do. You know, that is the uh, population that, the priority population that's specified um, by the program, by the bill language. Um, and there's an existing program there that's kind of, uh, that already does that. So. Um, that's kind of why we were asking if, if the THP contact um, at the county would be the same person um, that we can get that updated. Uh, the next question is, um, can, so we are a county contracted agency. We are not a county. Um, we're a nonprofit. Um, in order to receive, okay, and they're a THP plus provider. In order to receive the funding, am I correct that my program would need to contact our county Child Welfare Agency to make sure they're applying for the funding. So yes, that's absolutely what you should do is contact your county agency, make sure that they this is on their radar, and then ultimately they would be applying for the funding. Um, and then someone also, thank you for sending this, just clarified that with the um, the acceptance form, if you put your application your applicant's county into the drop downs, the amount will populate for you on the right if you don't already see it. Thank you for that. Um, and then. Let's see, scroll down here. So, oh, okay, will allocation amounts be the same every year um, for THP? So no, they won't. Um, two things there. So the first thing is HCD may change the methodology 
um, so that in the future there's a minimum amount that a county would receive. So kind of making it worth the administrative cost of accepting the allocation. As you probably saw, some county allocation amounts were really small, and so it doesn't um, actually, you know, it the cost of kind of accepting that funding is, um, you know, kind of almost equal to, to the, the amount of the allocation in a, a couple counties. And so just, I think they received feedback that having some sort of minimum would be, um, may, would be more sensible. So that may change, but also even if the methodology remains, um, the allocation amounts would still slightly change because the point in time count numbers that it was based on, um, kind of remember there was two factors. Um, the 2017 numbers are what determined this year's allocation and in for future, the next year it would be for the 2000, it would be with the 2019 point in time count. So they would probably not be too far astray, but there would be probably slight changes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Someone asked, where can I find the housing navigation acceptance form? So yeah, that's a good question. So the, the, the website, the webpage that we set up, the THP webpage, that is focused on the THP, the 8 million, because this is an ongoing annual, you know, um, opportunity and so we're it's it's there to stay it's going to live there whereas the housing navigation is one-time money we did not include it on that site but go to to hcd's webpage where this officially lives um and they have all of the application materials for both um oh no as i say that i'm just realizing that is not true <laughs> sorry they did the same thing they also set up the um the site just for thp um, I will send it out to everyone that registered for this web seminar so that you, you can take a look at it. Um, let's see. So will the timeline for spending down the funding next year be the same as it was for this year? So will it also be a two year window? Um, HCD response to that question when I asked them was that they believe so. So their, their, um, their intention is to make next year's funding also have a two-year window that for people to, for counties to spend it down um if we are granted an extension from hdd so this person is just clarifying um yes it only applies to the board resolution as of today that's the message that we got from hdd if you're granted an extension it is for the board resolution it is not for the acceptance forms or the tin so make sure to still get those in by the end of March. Um, and then uh, will the reporting requirements be the same next year? So uh, HCD has indicated they may change. Um, it's currently undecided. So uh, that is, we don't have an answer to that question right now, but as we get that information, we will share it. Um, and let's see. Currently, we are spending more per month than what we get. How can this allocation help uh, with the monthly rate? Amy, do you want to take this one since you kind of touched on this in on the slide? Yes. Well, you know, as we all know, the THP plus rate is set county by county, and many of the rates have uh, remained. I mean, it's really different in every county. You can't, uh, um, but there isn't any kind of standard uh, um, cost of living that is adjusted across the board. And so some counties have kept their current, their rates a little bit more current and others they haven't changed for a long time. And so uh, the idea would be to use this augmentation to, to bring your, bring your rate up to uh, a level where you're able to secure housing and sustain the program. So if your uh, rate has fallen behind and you're finding um, that you're not able to secure the housing in your community that you need to for the program to use this supplement uh, to do that. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we're, we have two more questions. So I just wanna encourage if anybody has any last questions to send them now um, and I'll take these two questions and then if, if there are no additional, we will close. So make sure and get any additional questions you have in now. Um, so, uh, and I think we covered a couple of these, um, so this is good to actually reiterate. Um, so when will the 2021 funding be released? Um, so HCD does not have an answer for this yet, except that it will be released earlier than this year. Um, and like I said, we at 
John Burton Advocates for Youth will definitely be advocating for release as early in the fiscal year as possible. Um, so that is our that is our goal, and we'll certainly um, work with the with HCD with DSS, you know, um, on on making that happen. And then, can providers apply directly to HCD for this funding? So again, just um, this is something only counties can apply for. This is a county allocation. So your role as a provider, your best bet is to just make sure that your county is applying for this funding. Ultimately, um, they may be contracting with someone to apply uh, for the funding. So you would be applying to them, to the county for the funding. Um, and then, okay, uh, will this slideshow and webinar be emailed out? Absolutely. So when we are done, I will send this out to everyone who registered for this webinar or call. And we'll also make it available on that web page um, that we uh, gave you a link to earlier. Um, all right. Simone, this is, this is Amy. One question that I do see, it was higher up, so I may have missed it, but I do think we oh, don't okay. have the answer to it, but I think it's important to, add, to put out there because uh, those of you who are county administrators, representatives, um, someone asked, will this be claimed through the county expense claim or will there be another claiming mechanism? I just wanted to put that out there. We, I don't know that answer. I don't know if you know it, Simone, but we will check with it check with HCD and CWDA so that you uh, know how this will be administered, because I know that that, uh, you know, you need that information to kind of know how, how this program works. So we will follow up on that one. Yes. And then I'm also seeing, um, please remind us who needs to sign the application form as it relates to the resolution and the TIN. So um, HCD has indicated whoever your authorized um, person is. So if that's the director of the agency, it just needs to be consistent. Um, who's signing, uh, the, the board of supervisors gives someone authority to do that. And that person, I think it's named in the resolution. And then that should be the same person on the TIN form and the same person on the acceptance form. And it sounds like it may vary from county to county, um, but uh, it just needs to be consistent across those three um, forms. Um, I think oh, is there, that, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I think there one last question was, is there a way to figure out if my county has applied? And I think that's a really good question. I mm -hmm. uh, really do believe in our current context with the serious global health pandemic we're experiencing, you know, counties are, I mean, one of my dear friends works for one. We saw each other today briefly, and we really, the level of responsibility they have, you know, to the public, what they're doing the scramble that's going on really can't be overstated. And so um, I do worry that something that looks kind of maybe, you know, less than urgent could fall through the cracks. And so, I mean, I'd like to say that we can kind of track that, but I think the best thing is if you're a person in your county, just to, you know, persistently try and find that out um, because, um, you know, so to contact the people that you know, the people that you work with, um, uh, I think that's really the not the tidiest way, but probably the best way. That's um, and don't assume anything, um, because even if we would, you know, ask Stephanie to kind of tell us, and then we report it out, some counties may need to work all the way up till the last minute to submit it. Um, and so, um, the best thing is just to try and work your network and have conversations and. Um, just support people the best you can to to submit that. It seems like everyone's being really flexible um, and really accommodating, which is awesome. Um, but at the same time, you know, people are more taxed than ever, you know, because, you know, there's social service and child welfare agencies. So there's a lot that they have to do. So that's, like I said, it's, I think, just probably practically um, the best way to is for you to figure it out yourself. Anything I just you want to add on that, Simone? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I like, yeah, no. I think that's, that's, I agree. And we can reach out to Stephanie to get an idea of, you know, have most counties applied? Um, we certainly, it's our goal to, for all counties to claim these, this money. So um, we will do what we can to help facilitate that process. 
Um, I just scrolled up. It looks like there are no more questions on here, but at a later date, you know, if in five minutes or in five days, if you think of a question that wasn't on here, um, just email, feel free to email me and we'll be um, corresponding with people about this. And, and I just also just want to kind of reiterate that, and Amy mentioned this, but <clears throat> with everything going on right now with this um, virus that obviously everyone's very concerned about uh, and trying to think about ways to, to um, assist um, the young people in their community. Um, I think that this funding is not irrelevant um, and just it, it's uh, going to be awarded in the next couple months. Um, I don't think that we are going to see the coronavirus be gone by then. So I just think that, that, you know, while people are busy dealing with everything related to the coronavirus, I think it's in people's best interest to pay attention to this because it's another resource for um, assisting young people that are impacted by um, whether it's loss of wages or um, whatever the impact is. So anything else, Amy, that we want to share? I don't think so. Just thank you, everyone, for being available. All right. Thanks for joining everyone and uh, stay healthy and, and have a good rest of the week.